Hi folks, um, <clears throat> I was just going through some of my old gear, old stuff, and I found this now obsolete videotape. And uh, just so I'll turn it so that the light from the window doesn't reflect on it. You can see that. Anyway, it's it's a recording, it's a film of the life of Paco de Lucia and it's called Light and Shade. I took a pupil of mine down to the London Guitar Studio, uh, 62 Duke Street, London. Um, uh, it's also known as El Mundo Flamenco and it's the largest selection of flamenco guitars in Europe, certainly, maybe even the world, in one place, the whole of the upper the upper floor is filled with classical guitars, and the basement is filled with flamenco guitars. Anyway, took a pupil of mine down there to buy a guitar, which he did do. He bought a guitar, and because I took him down there and introduced him, uh, Juan, who runs the place, gave me this tape and it's very very good. Now the theme of this video is how did Paco become so good? And if you if you if you watch this you would understand why how it happened. Number 1 he was born into a family of professional flamenco artists. Made, who made a living playing at parties. He, when his father and friends did a gig, they'd come home and then play for themselves until the early hours of the morning, very almost still playing at the at daybreak, whatever. So as a child, he had this music around him all the time. And it can very, very much... Uh, when you're born into a culture like that, it's a process of osmosis. I mean, it's just soaking into you from the day you're born. Probably while he was still in the womb, I would think. His brothers, generations of his family beforehand, all played. Now, he was also incredibly talented, um, which obviously helps. <laughs> um, but he... Uh, he was the most talented, definitely, of his siblings, um, and I don't know how the education system was in Spain at the time, I, I, I don't know, but apparently when he was eight years old, I mean, I haven't seen this tape for a long time, so if I have some inaccuracies here, forgive me, because I must have, you know, modified the facts or forgotten, because I haven't seen it a long time, and now I can't play this thing anyway, because it's... There are no equipment. I don't have any equipment to play it on. Um, apparently, his father uh, said, when he was eight years old, said, "You can add and subtract, and you can read and write. Um, I can't afford to send you to school anymore. You can practice your guitar all day." And this he did. He was in his room for eight to ten hours a day, practicing his guitar. Paco himself actually said uh, that sometimes he would climb out the window to go and play with his friends in the street. But basically that was the regime. I'm not sure at what age because I've forgotten, but a very early age, probably 11, 12 years old. He and his brother, they won a competition. Or his brother um, won a competition and, and it was something like... Uh, he was too young to actually be eligible, eligible for the first prize. But, uh, but the crowd went wild and they were shouting and shouting, give the first prize to the child with the guitar. And so they had to invent a new prize to give to him. So that was how outstandingly gifted he was at an early age. Now, there was a, a dance group, Jose, Jose Greco, uh, his dance group was touring internationally and he, um, sorry I'll have to go back a, a bit, uh, with the prize money that they won 
um, the father uh, made the first recording of the two boys, Paco and his brother, it may have been Ramon's uh, singing. Uh, and uh, with the money that he, he, the prize money he got, he made a, re he took them to Madrid, I think, and made a recording. Los Chicos Algeciras, I think it was called. Anyway, this Jose Greco um, dance group was touring the United States and they wanted a singer. And so they took Paco's brother as a singer with them. The father said, no, you can't take him unless you take Paco as well. Um, and they went off to tour, but they didn't take Paco. And they, and they uh, after a while, the father contacted them and said, look, you send the other boy home or you take Paco. And apparently they took him and he was put on a plane alone, just with his guitar, at 12 years of age, sent to America and was touring with, this, with the group. And obviously he played professionally ever since. Um, now while he was there, <coughs> Sabikas, who lived in Mexico City much of his life, I, th I think, um, and toured, in, toured uh, North America as well, Apparently he heard, he heard about this, this youngster who was um, an excellent guitar player. And he went to visit him in a hotel. And uh, apparently he said, told Paco, because Paco was playing mostly um, uh, Nino Ricardo stuff and influence stuff and his father had before him, uh, as many others. Um, Sabika said to him, a guitarist should not play someone else's material. You need to make your own. Apparently from that moment Paco decided that he would only play his own stuff and he said that initially he just kept playing the same few little bits over and over again because that was all he had. Um, so you can just see the amount of total, total, total dedication that it takes to be that good as well as being an exceptional talent in the first place. So us mere mortals, you know, we shouldn't really beat ourselves up too much um, because that's how you get that good. Talent alone isn't good enough. Work without talent will never be totally exceptional. You need to be talented and then you need to do the work on top of that. You need both. Now unfortunately people who are naturally talented tend to be a bit lazy because it comes easy to them. So therefore they don't do the work. Some people will get their heads down and they'll do the work, but they don't have the talent in the first place. Not knocking anyone, because I, I've, I've taught lots of people, I've taught some people, quite a few people, who you teach them three chords, within six months they form a country band, and that's all they want to do, they're happy with it. So, and if they're happy, so what, you know? Um, so... That's what it takes, and so therefore, practice, 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 and you can only do that if you love it. You can't force yourself to do this stuff. I mean, I couldn't force myself to play cricket because I have no interest in it. You know, it's, it's just how it is. Uh, but the guitar is very addictive and can become like a drug, you know. Uh, you, you practice regularly, and then all of a sudden you realize that you can't not do it. Um, something that you have to do it becomes an obsession and that's you know that's that's the way it is but we all have to whatever level where uh, anyone anyone who perseveres enough to play a musical instrument to even a very modest standard deserves some respect um, so you know i have a somewhere i have an old an old an old flamenco book by mariano cordoba cordoba um, <clears throat> probably one of the contemporaries of uh, Juan Serrano around that kind of era. era. And in the, in the back of his book, 
there is just a small paragraph and he says that um, if you if you want to be an amateur an amateur I think about two hours a day he says something like that semi-professional about practice four hours a day if you want to be a professional eight hours a day and even way back there but then the culture they came from allowed you to do that because if you wanted to play the guitar you know obviously your families would uh, particularly gypsy families they would, they would encourage you to do that and they would feed you and clothe you and keep you while you did that it's not possible for everyone here who has to who's had a demanding full-time education and then has you know has to get into a career and all that kind of thing and your art tends to take second place I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing you know I mean if you're obsessed with one thing then it is your life do you want such a narrow path in your life or, or not um, being a successful professional musician is not um, the glamorous thing that most people think it is touring is apart from the time that you enjoy on stage is hard it's disastrous on relationships it's all kinds like that so you know you, you you take your choice but you have to be realistic about it it's not like oh I'm making it big and being a big star and having lots of money and everything's wonderful it, it, it's not like that <clears throat> you just have to love what you do that's the main thing anyway there it is it's called light and shade and if it's available these days on DVD, I would urge anyone interested in the subject to certainly get it because it's a great watch and a great education.